Hey folks, what's up? It's Hezri here with another tutorial. In this one I show you how to produce some chaos and irregularity using a fracture object, random effector and a plugin called Explode. Uh, so this is what we're going to be creating. Uh, in this one I'm going to show you some, you know, lighting, uh, you know, we're going to after the, uh, when we do the basic setup and uh, the basic setup and animation is finished, we're going to just do some simple lighting and background creation, stuff like that. So let's just uh, hopefully we will be able to create something like this by the end of this tutorial so let's uh, just um, get started uh, I'm gonna just create a new Cinema 4D file get your mo text here and let's type whatever you want I'm just going to use a simple word a simple letter like I don't know really doesn't matter let's go to something like M and I like this uh, typograph font. I really like it. Uh, I use it a lot. And let's go to something like maybe 65 centimeters and go to the caps. Make sure both start and end are fillet caps. And go to something like possibly five steps and one centimeter for both. Um, start and end caps there we go something like this and let's enable this constraint also there we go we have this and let's just uh, hit C and get it go inside hit C again and middle click on the parent so the child gets selected object current object uh, connect object and delete and just uh, get there and delete the nodes there we go now you have this simple object and generally speaking, it's a good idea to optimize your mesh because uh, if you select one of these polys and move it, you can see it's not attached. So let me uh, control A, select all the polys, right click and go to the optimize. Now the poly is attached to the mesh. That's great. Now uh, let me just uh, go through and start using a, poly a plugin called Explode You Can. It's a free plugin and you can download it from uh, Nitro4D website. Just uh, type Nitro4D Explode. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go through and uh, select this guy. And let's type in Explode. There we go. And double click on the Explode. Uh, let's go to something like 500 and see what we're going to get. Hit Add and you can then simply uh, hit scatter and as you can see now uh, it uh, finished the uh, job and if you go through you can see you get if you I hit NB you can see the uh, different parts that uh, explode has created basically it has exploded our object based on some Voroni pattern and we get this different uh, part and if I select for example this one here you can see where where are you there we go you can see how it's kind of very nicely explode our uh, mesh that's great now when it's done uh, this is the uh, original object it's a good idea to actually save it so uh, let's go to our pieces and let me create a fracture object I think I've uh, explained uh, in one of my tutorial what fracture object is so I don't think there is a need to go over it again so let's uh, just select the first one and come down here hold on shift select the last one go up and put these guys inside the fracture object close the uh, we can simply delete this uh, null here and there we go now we have our object inside uh, the uh, fracture object all the pieces and we can simply now do whatever you want uh, using this fracture object by adding different effectors and even though and even you can actually uh, as, uh, add some rigid body tags and make the object to be dynamic and create some nice stuff uh, but uh, what we're going to be doing is not that we're going to be selecting this fracture object go to your MoGraph effector and let's add a random effector there you go that's the first part I'm just going to enable the rotation let's go to something like 
200, 200, 150, 300, really doesn't matter that much. And I can simply change my fall off shape to be a linear, go to positive or negative X, and that's what you're gonna get. It's nice, isn't it? Now, you can simply, if you want, animate this and uh, really do whatever you want. Simply go to your run effector, go, for example, to something like here, go to the uh, coordinates, uh, control click, and let's go to something like 90 frames and do something like this. And this is what you get. Very nice and simple. And the next thing is you can simply add some delay effect also, see how it work. So let's uh, add the delay effector and let's first of all see how it works and looks when we use the spring type and hit play. Now that's nice, but we definitely need more frames here. Let's do it again and see. That's up to you if you like it, but I don't think it's really that necessary. So I'm gonna delete the delay effector in this case and get back to the 90 frame timeline. There we go, now we have this and imagine you really have a lot of possibilities by adding different effectors. If you change this object to be a dynamic object uh, then you have access to these uh, different forces here and you can really create amazing stuff so I, uh, I'm i sure you can uh, use this stuff so I'm not gonna explain how to actually just simply you can uh, go to this guy change it to a rigid body object and uh, add these different forces here so this is up to you make sure you're when you add the rigid body object go to these individual elements and uh, go to the top level or all so the uh, child the children also get affected by the uh, forces and dynamic tag so let me delete this dynamic tag here and start uh, quickly create some basic materials and lighting so let's uh, first of all go uh, to our lighting I'm just going to simply create an area light as a, something like 90 degrees and let's put it up here and make it a bit bigger try to center it a bit more and go to the light again make sure you have an area shadow and also in the detail tab make sure you have the uh, inward square clumped fall off type and let's see something like this for me is quite enough possibly and let's add some more lights we can simply go to this light and duplicate it and uh, we could have created a target for these lights to much more simpler control them but uh, it's a really quick tutorial and uh, we're gonna be let's me go to here becoming a bit hard to see what's going on all the lines in the scene so and let me go with my first light and go to general tab and turn off this shell illumination so you don't see the uh, fall off lines and it's definitely much more easier to control and let's just make it bigger from this side and I guess something like this and let's duplicate this go to this first one turn off the show illumination and um, turn off turn on the local coordinates again sorry select this guy here and Let's just go to make it some sort of backlights here. You can make it also closer. Okay. This is this one and let's add one more light. Just duplicate this light again. And for this last one, 
I'm going to put it right here. So and something like this. Let's select these three lights and make sure they are intensity is a bit more lower something like <clears throat> 75 and also I'm going to disable shadow for this last two ones so there we go now the next part would be to uh, let's have a quick, quick camera here and go to something like 15 and see how it's gonna be there I think something like this okay go to your render setting and make sure you got the HD here and go to something like 960 540 for just some test renders and also I'm going to enable ambient occlusion enable global illumination and also I'm going to use the physical render for the renders and go to these uh, physical tab here let's just have a test render with the law setting let me create some material for our main object let's go to this color and I'm selecting this color here go to my reflection use the Fresnel and go inside Fresnel make sure the second color is not that dark <laughs> something like this would be possibly enough and also go to the illumination tab I'm going to add a noise in here and let's just increase the low clip here so we just have the white parts and global scale something like five percent and there we go something like this I think would be nice and enough and there we go create a simple background and create another simple material go to the color in, let's go to something like uh, gradients inside gradients make sure it's uh, circular I think everybody knows how to create background but uh, just for the fun of it so there we go apply this one and I think we can have a test render quickly and see what we have here okay Okay, that's great. You forgot to apply our material. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, go here and apply this to your fracture object and <laughs> let's render it again and see what we're gonna get this time. So we are waiting. Okay, there we go. Finally, it's rendering, and I think it's not too bad. And if you like, you can render out the animation and do some compositing or post production inside After Effects or whatever compositing software that you use. But generally speaking, I think it's very nice, and you can really go crazy about this idea and add so many effects, add different random effectors, add plane effectors, add formula effector and create amazing stuff. There we go, it's not too bad definitely and we can go through, uh, let's just uh, go to this random effector and maybe go to something like this, be possibly nicer. And um, let's just uh, quickly render it uh, and see what we have. There we go, so the render is finished. Uh, I know there's a lot of noises and uh, if I really uh, had to do it for a real job, I would go through and add some, uh, make the sampling quality something to medium and uh, go to my ambient occlusion or global illumination and 
uh, add more quality for the record densities and the uh, samples but uh, I think for um, a quick setup is uh, quite great and you can go there and add whatever you want so uh, hopefully you like this tutorial and I'm working on a, prom a premium course soon to be published on Udemy and possibly Vimeo on demand I'm not sure quite yet but definitely be published on Udemy so uh, thank you for watching this tutorial and I invite you to watch the promo for my premium course which will be published in about seven to ten days and by the way we are gonna have about uh, 150 percent coupons so you can basically uh, get that course by something like 12 to 40 boxes so make sure to uh, follow this channel and hopefully we're gonna have um, more tutorials and premium courses so uh, thank you for watching Hi, my name is Kamel Khazri. I'm a 3D motion graphic designer. I have been doing 3D motion graphic designs for almost 4 years and it's a great pleasure for me to share my experience with you. So please join me in this course where I'm gonna teach you my workflow for creating stunning 3D motion graphic designs. In this course, we're gonna be taking one of my 3D motion designs called the GIF and show you the complete process for creating the GIF from start to finish. Before anything, let's watch the 3D motion design that we're going to be creating in this course. So let's get started.